What's up, everybody? It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about never paying collections. There's a video going around YouTube, and the guys up there giving bad information about never paying debt collections and never paying collections. This, which is incredible, but people get to say these things because what they're doing is just selling ebooks and MP3s and you know, membership videos. They never deal with people, real customers on a day-to-day -day basis. They never see the consequences either face-to-face -face or talk to people over the phone from not doing what needs to be done. Now, I agree, you should never pay a collection that you don't have to. Even one of a, even a debt that you had from the past that you know is yours, you should always run it through what I call a validation process. And let me tell you, uh, you know, some of the misconceptions about what this guy was saying on his video. He said uh, the first one was never pay a collection. Uh, we all know that in reality, there's some collections that you could potentially have to pay. And I'm going to walk you through step by step to see if that would happen for you. The next thing is he claimed that the reasons why a debt collector can come after you is because when you were on the phone with them, as soon as you answered you and they said, is this so-and-so, and you say your name, that that allows them to be able to collect the debt from you. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is horrible information that this guy is giving to people. Just because you say you are who you are, on the phone does not allow a debt collection company to say, oh, this debt 100% belongs to you. What usually happens is that a person says it's them and then they answer questions from the debt collector the wrong way. And if you've been watching my video, you know that you want to establish the relationship between you and that debt collector. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. Another thing that showed me that this person doesn't know what he's talking about is that he actually said he gave an example of a T-Mobile bill that one of his customers had gotten and the debt collector bought that bill for $20. Obviously, this guy has no clue about what debt collectors buy debt for. They would never buy a $200 T-Mobile bill for $20. No way. They would buy it for maybe at the most $1 to or 50 cents or $2 if they uh, were nuts. But they usually buy these in bulk. They would never, T-Mobile would only sell millions of dollars worth at one time. They would never, uh, if they would never be able to get $20 per the other thing, uh, misconception that he uh, talked about with charge-offs, he said uh, when when the company charged off the debt, they're going to write it off on their taxes. Yes, they're going to write it off on their taxes, but what he did not know or understand was that it is a requirement by law for these companies to take this off the books because these are publicly traded companies and they must take that asset off the book they cannot t-mobile cannot say that they have all of these users and still uh use that as even though those users are in collections or not paying their bill they cannot use them as an asset so this is a protection to people like you and i that invest in these types of companies on the stock market to make sure that they're given adequate accounting records. That's why they do the charge-offs. And so it's it's a legal uh, process that they have to do for lenders to do a charge-off usually in six months. Now, let's just go back, because I, you know I'm real here, I'm very real. Let's just go back. Whenever any of us got into trouble or something didn't work out the way that we thought that they should, if we look back in our past, it's because we didn't either face our fears, if it was something that we just didn't want to deal with, or we didn't tell the truth, 
And what I'm telling you when you're dealing with collections is that you need to face the fears of dealing with that collection, number one, which is to look at it and read the entire document that they send you. Because when you do that and you tell the truth to yourself about, hey, I got to deal with this, then you start looking for solutions. I think that when people face their fears and when people tell the truth about a situation, that then they can start looking for solutions. Because if you're not being truthful, truthful with yourself, your, your mind is going to constantly just be in a, like a puzzle that's just all thrown on the floor in pieces, if you can imagine that. But when you are truthful with yourself and when you face your fears, you deal with that. You put that. That's like all that's a picture. You understand that picture and that allows you to move forward with solutions, which is what I'm all about. Now, the when this uh, individual said that when you when they call you on the phone and you admit your name to the debt that that you actually that that debt is at, can go straight to you just by doing that that is not true what happens this is the process this is the process just in case you don't know you're going to get that a letter in the mail this is called a dunning letter uh, which is the legal term for it you're going to get that letter in the mail that letter is going to be a collection letter and it's going to state a few things on there it's going to say who the original creditor was the collection agency that's trying to come after you and then it's going to say what the debt is account number and it's going to have a paragraph usually at the in the middle where most people don't continue reading to that's going to say that you have 30 days to dispute this debt if you do not believe that it's yours or the balance or any part of it, you have 30 days to do it. That is where people fall off at, not by calling a debt collector on the phone. You can actually call a debt collector over the phone and tell them your financial situation, and they will choose not to come after you for that debt. And when I say tell them your financial situation, not if you're working, what I'm saying is if you're, uh, uh, let's just say you're unemployed, let's just say that you are uh, disabled, that type of situation. And if you watch my other videos, I talk about that. Use the solution. So you know the situation and then you and then you look at the solution. Solution can be dependent on your financial situation. Now, if you're working, it doesn't matter if you're working a low wage job or any type of job, that is not the solution that you want to go to. You just want to identify with the debt collector what's going on so let me just be very clear if you're disabled unemployed uh really no income that could be garnished you would call that debt collector and let them know your situation if you are not in that situation you would not call the debt collector you would respond to the letter that's why it's very important to watch my videos because i'm telling you the solution so now you you before you send the letter to them responding to that 30 day letter there's one thing that you got to check that you got to check right away right away and you need to have your credit reports to do this so if you don't have your credit reports there's a link below to to a website that I refer people to www.your the number 3 scores.com the link is below this video go there Look at when that uh, collection, that original creditor account charged off. Look at it. Because what you want to do is you want to now look at that and then go to your state statute of limitations laws for contract law, for contracts. Right there, if it is past the statute of limitations for your state, every state is different. If you don't know, uh, you can either type it up online or go to my website, thecreditrepairshop.com. In the search bar, go to my blog at the bottom, hit, hit click on the blog. In the search bar, type statute of limitations. Uh, link will come up, and then you can look at the, I, I put them on there for every state. If it falls below the statute of limitations for your state, you simply have to do this on a letter. You inform them and you say, 
uh, such and such uh, collection agency put their information on the letter at the top. I'm informing you that this debt with the original creditor, whoever they are, count number, whatever they put on there, is accord uh, is past statute of limitations according to my state. You put your state, and that I that I request that you cease all collection activities, or I will um, uh, report you to the proper proper authorities in the, my state, which would be your state attorney general. Uh, because they're coming after you for a debt that you do not have any legal obligation to pay. That's step number one. If it is not past statute of limitations, then we go to step number two, which is to do a full validation of the debt. This is where you want to see uh, the relationship between the original creditor and the debt collection company. You cannot assume that the debt collector purchase the debt like this individual was talking about. Do not assume that because there are a lot of companies that will hire a debt collection company and they will allow them to collect the debt, you know, make the calls, collect the debt, collect as much as they can and get a commission on it, or they just do a retainer and then they uh, collect as much as they can, uh, you know, on the outstanding debt. So you need to find that relationship. You need to do a validation first to see what the relationship between number one, them, they are between you and then they're going to say that they either purchased the debt or that they're assigned the debt from a debt collect another debt collector or from the original creditor. Once you start putting those pieces together, then you start to move forward on the next solution, which is, uh, depending on what they come back with, if they come back and say, well, we purchased the debt, then you need to request all of the original information, uh, paperwork, contracts, uh, charges, if it's a credit card, everything to make them prove that you owe the amount of the debt. They can't just give you a bill and say, oh, you owe $4,000 on this uh, old credit card. They cannot do that. They have to maintain all of the records from whatever company they purchased them from. If it's a uh, repo, they have to show you the auction statement. They have to show you your original contract. You need to review your original contract. Make sure that there's no discrepancies in there. Make sure that there was no uh, insurances that would pay the auto uh, lender for payments that were missed or for if the loan went bad. There's all these types of uh, insurances that these companies are buying now and a vehicle could be paid off. You could, they could sell it at an auction for more than what you even knew about. They must give you all of that information so you can determine which direction you want to go with the next solution. If it's a medical bill, what is it deductibles? Was it for the services that you wanted to have done? Was it done at, at your hospital uh, that's in your network and, they made, and it was an accidental billing. That happened to, to me and my wife. They tried to charge us 1700 bucks, saying that we were out of network and my wife was in that hospital. It was a, a, a mistake. So all of these things, when you're looking for solutions, you got to get all the information in front of you so you can start seeking out the solutions on every step. And I have plenty of videos that will uh, walk you through those there. So if, if you need help, oh, one last, one last thing, the, the debt collection companies that I was getting the uh, information from, I think they caught on to me, uh, they did not send out, they sent out one, which was with a payday loan company, 500,000, but they make it, they're making everyone log in. So I think they, they've caught on to me uh, telling you guys and, and girls about the, the uh, debt that's being released on the market. Uh, so I'm making, I'm stepping on some toes by letting you know what's coming uh, each month or, or even each week what, what's being purchased out on the market. Uh, so um, I'm going to do some digging. I'm going to figure out a way to be able to get that information back 
again so we can let you know what's 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 happening with debt and then uh also thinking positive remember I, we we talk about it uh my statement is not going to be the same for you moving forward you are going to make changes perception is reality if you start to think positive about your situation think about solutions your solution will come to you and you will be successful all you have to do is start thinking positive and don't let negative uh, thoughts dominate your mind is it it might it, it's not possible to not have any negative thoughts what is possible is to control those negative thoughts to control how you allow negative thoughts to control you all you do is cross them out and think positive just start envisioning the way you want your life to be if you have collections coming after you start envisioning yourself working out deals to get rid of these collections and that does not mean paying the collection that means running them through a process to see what's going uh, to be the solutions the potential solutions for dealing with debt collections so if you need my help, uh, reach out to us, uh, thecreditrepairshop.com. Uh, the link is below. Also, the link is below for getting your credit reports and scores. You need to see what's on there. That's like step number one of starting your credit repair journey is to get those credit reports and scan through them uh, like you're looking at your paycheck. You want to know every detail about that, that credit report to make sure that it, it is true. Uh, and if you post your comments, please subscribe to my page, share uh, my channel uh, with other people uh, here on YouTube. So, you know, you know, your friends and family, this is great information. This is real information. So until next time, this is Stephen Williams, founder and president of the credit Thank you.